Welcome to the Porch View Dances 2023 information session. As we just got notified, the session is recorded and there is closed captioning available if you need. As well, Sarah is available via chat for any technical support. My name is Sid Ryan. My pronouns are they, them, and I am one of the co-curators this year. Porch View Dances is an outdoor festival founded in 2012 by artistic director Karen Kaja and developed with Alan Kaja. It activates porches in Seton Village. Seton Village is the area between DuPont and Bloor and Christie and Bathurst. Porch View Dances celebrates real people dancing in real spaces. Selected choreographers will invite community participants, non-professional dancers from their own circles to participate and perform. Porch View Dances is a walking tour which culminates in a park dance flock landing celebration. It will take place August 9th to the 13th, 2023. Today, I am Zooming to you from so-called Hamilton, Ontario. Like Toronto, Hamilton is covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant and is home to the Erie Neutral Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Mississaugas. Turtle Island is cared for and is home to many named and unnamed Indigenous people for millennia. This acknowledgement is from my current understanding, unlearning, and is continuing to change and evolve. The dish with one spoon wampum belt is an agreement to live alongside one another as friends, as neighbors, to live in community. This agreement is a calling to bring us together into a mindful and intentional relationship a relationship that shares and cares for one another, our resources, our environment, and to consider the impacts we are creating for our collective future. We stand in solidarity with murdered and missing Indigenous women, girls, transgender, and two-spirit people, and with the innumerable amount of children who were brutally kidnapped and murdered by the individuals who conceived, allowed, and carried out the residential school system we'll take a moment of silence to honor their lives. Thank you so much. I'm going to post some links in the chat box to various indigenous learning, and I'm going to pass it on to Alan. Thank you so much, Sid. I'm Alan Kasia, he, him, but I prefer Alan. I'm co-artistic director of Kasia to Dance with Karen Kasia, and I will pass it to Karen. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm Karen Kasia, she, her, and co artistic director with Alan of Kasia to Dance and founder and artistic director of Porchview Dances. Porchview Dances is a community based dance festival that goes beyond Seton Village community where it was born and establishes that dance in is an all people experience and not an elitist scenario. The participants often have values and experiences of dance that are different than the professionally trained dancer. Poetry Dances is definitely a spirited project. It is. It was born from our living room during a budget meeting. I was drifting, looking out the window at the people across the street, um, kind of as I am right now. And I wondered what it would be like if the activity on the front porch that I was witnessing became a dance. I turned back around and interrupted the meeting with this vision of dances that express stories of its inhabitants spilling out of the front door, out of the mouth of the home, onto the front lawn. And before I knew it, we were frantically writing a grant to make it happen. We all were excited about the idea, and Porchy Dances is one of those creative visions that came true and was born in 2012. 
I was very interested in preserving and sharing the stories of the inhabitants. Now we're on our 12th annual and during the pandemic, it continued, but in the form of online films and various iterations. Um, Port She Dances has had several seasons in Kitchener, in Ottawa at the Canada Dance Festival, in Etobicoke, and um, other people have created events inspired by Port She Dances in Toronto, Calgary, and in Israel. In 2017, we began borrowing porches as a venue, as opposed to only having the people that lived, that live in the home be the participants, be the performers. Poetry Dances opens the door to people's lives and invites the audience to become part of the dance at the end in the flock landing and makes it clear that all people are dancers. A large part of being a PVD short form, choreographer is being very fluid and an active listener, observer, and integrator of notice, movement, and behavior. It considers people and space and enjoy, and it's for people and creators who enjoy creating community with each other. These qualities are valuable when working with the participants of Porch View Dances. There's a ripple effect of being involved in Porch View Dances. We all feel it every year. You make new connections, meaningful art that changes the participants' lives in some way. And it has a subtle and often profound effect on the participants and the audiences and the choreographers. I'd like to just share a few quotes that I pulled together with you from participants over the years of Port Street Dances. Here I go. I was so moved. I was literally shaking and I wept. Beautiful work to watch, wonderful to be part of a community that dances together and celebrates movement, family, people who care about one another. Performing in Portuguese dances changed my life. I made new friends, strengthened relationships. I had a reason to get to know people I had never spoken to before. And I explored something I always dreamed of doing in front of a bunch of really beautiful, supportive and curious people. PVD has been the highlight of my summer. I appreciated the chance to tap into a creative side that I don't access to as much as I would like. And for a final closing, I am continuously surprised by how strangers connect and come together in the creative process, regardless of life circumstances. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm just going to talk about an experience that I had uh, while creating with the family. Um, I had talked to uh, the uh, one of the family members maybe about three months before we started creation, uh, and uh, their name is Judith. And Judith was so excited and said, "My whole family is going to be involved. We're just ready to go." And I ran into Judith basically the day before rehearsals were to start uh, in a grocery store, a local grocery store. And Judith was almost in tears and said, Alan, I am so sorry, but nobody wants to participate. It's just me. And I said, Judith is totally fine. Let's begin rehearsals. And so the next day, Judith and I began on uh, her front porch and her daughter was in a rush and ran out the front door and slammed the door shut and was running down the stairs. I said, oh, Sophie, that was amazing. Could you, would you mind doing that one more time? And she kind of looked at me and she goes, oh, okay. Ran back in the house, came in, slammed the door, da, da, da. And within, I would say a rehearsal, Sophie comes up to me and says, Alan, do you mind if I also bring one of my friends to participate? And so, now there's three people in there. And then Judith's husband is a runner and came running out the door and is running down the front steps. And I said, Gregor, that was amazing. Would you mind doing that again at this particular point in the piece? And he kind of went, well, yeah, sure, okay. And next thing I know, not only is Gregor there, but Gregor has brought his sister-in-law in. So within a matter of a week, we went from a solo 
to a full group piece. And then musically, the neighbor was walking out of the house one day with this huge, gorgeous double bass. And I said, do you play that live? He goes, yeah, of course. And I said, would you mind playing live for the piece? Anyway, and Adam, who's now our managing director, ended up playing live for the performance. So it's just as fluid as could be. Um, it's so much fun. So that being said, Sarah has a short video and then I'm going to do a short introduction into the whole process. Sarah and Sarah created that video just a couple of days ago, which is amazing. Thank you, Sarah. So for PVD, normally the audience gathers at what is usually the very first house that we're going to perform at. And our tour guide, and for the last couple of years, it's been Mary Moonshine, who you can see there. And Mary Moonshine is going to be our tour guide again this, this uh, summer. And uh, Mary introduces themselves, uh, talks about the audience, we uh, have the land acknowledgement, and then introduces the choreographer of the house and the participants of the house. And so the audience is there. In the past, we have, it ranges between two and 400 people per show. And uh, the performance happens, and then at the end of it, we all clap vigorously. Mary Moonshine leads us on a journey. And uh, that was our former tour guide uh, in the upper photo, uh, Mariti, who retired a few years ago. And we walk through the uh, Seton Village. And while we're walking through Seton Village, we have this incredible group of cyclists who protect us. And they, they block uh, uh, the roads from cars coming. Though, honestly, 300 people block cars really well. And as we're on the journey, we run into what we call vignettes. And a vignette is professional dancers. So the porch itself is a professional choreographer working with a, uh, um, a, a non-dancer in, in essence, but the vignettes are professional choreographers. And so we will journey to I think four houses this year and there's three vignettes and then at the very end all the audience gathers in and is invited to participate in what we call the flock landing uh, Karen's concept where everyone is invited to dance and uh, it's beautiful we've had hundreds of people come into Vermont Square, Square Park and dance and uh, and then afterwards we celebrate Back to you. Hey, everybody. I'm uh, Sophie Gulino. I'm a co-curator this season working with Sid. And um, I'm also the artistic producer, which means um, I'm liaising with all the artists and other arms of Keisha to dance to make this wonderful festival happen. I want to walk everybody through the application process because it's a little bit different this year. So, well, this is the first step of it, of course, is this online information session. It's being recorded and it will be available on our website if you feel the need to um, get back into it and get some more information. 
And then essentially what we're asking choreographers to do is create expressions of interest, which are a little bit different from an application. So the expression of interest is made in a Google form, which asks you to do two things. One of them is express your interest in uh, choreographing for porch view dances using writing, so 500 words max, or an audio or video recording of yourself, three minutes max, um, describing your desire to work on community dancers, how you have worked in the past or how you would like to work in the future, why you think you might be a great fit for PVD, in the Google form, there's some prompt questions, but it's intentionally open ended to give you space to tell us who you are and why you're interested. And then the second thing that we'll ask you for is for you to show us some of your work, and this is kind of support material, um, but maybe not in the, in the traditional sense, because it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, formally presented support material of your dance practice, it can be, of course. But because we're looking for people who work inside of the community, it can be videos of um, yeah, other aspects of that work. From the expression of interests, Sid and I will sift through them and select a short list of artists to have coffee chats with. Uh, these coffee dates will happen one on one with me on, and Sid, sorry, two on one then, <laughs> with Sid and I and the choreographer. Uh, 30 minutes max on Zoom um, for us to get to know you, to ask you questions that came up in the expression of interest, reading your writing or viewing your material. And um, yeah, also to be a resource for you if you have more questions. The intention behind working with a different application process this year is that we want to move away from application proceeds that privilege writing, art speak, and fancy support material. You know, it's a community and public dance festival. So we want to hear candidly from choreographers about why and how they want to work on community. We also really want the application process to feel enriching for you. And we hope that the face to face time builds more trust and relationship with PVD and choreographers. So either way, we're really excited. And that's what the process would look like. So from the chats, Sid and I will then create a few curated shortlist options, looping back in Karen and Alan to consult us in that final list. And then we'll curate the night from there. And that's what the application process looks like. I want to move into uh, a Q&A period. That's all of the speaking that we have for you today. So really, like what we're hoping for is to hear your thoughts, your questions. Um, I'm going to moderate the chat so you can drop them in. You can drop your questions into the Zoom chat. Um, it's wonderful that we have Karen, the founder of the festival here. She's an amazing resource. If you have anything that comes to mind that you'd love to ask her. But uh, questions can be directed at any of us. All right, we have our first question from Chloe. Chloe asks, how are pairings made between choreographers and community members? Great question. Karen? Choreographers bring their own community participants. So it will be people that you know, people that know who you know, that you will gather and bring together. And um, that's pretty much. It. You do not have to apply with those people in mind, but know that that commitment that you will be finding your people and we're happy to help how that might, um, what that approach might be. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Karen. And Marie has a question. Are the porches pre-chosen?
we are going to do our best to pre-choose the porches in this hood because one of the things that's very important is what is the rooting? We try to keep the rooting to about 700 meters, so fairly reasonable. But that being said, if you happen to know somebody who lives in Seton Village and says, I'd love to donate my porch, then please also let us know. But we've already started reaching out to uh, uh, our community here. Pablo's asking, I didn't catch what the intro video expectations would be. Do you mind repeating? Of course, I'd be happy to repeat. Pablo, can you clarify for me, do you mean when I was speaking about uh, the support material in the application process? Yes, great. So the support material um, can look like whatever it is that you need it to. I think what we're expecting to see is videos of past dance work, videos of um, dance work that you've put on community or ways that you're working in the community. So this should be, Sid, is that your hand? No? <laughs> no, I was gonna offer, I didn't mean to interrupt, interrupt. No, 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 you're good. <laughs> um, I was gonna offer as well, like maybe you facilitate movement workshops with community members and you wanna film a little bit of your class. It really could be anything that lets us get a sense of who you are as a choreographer and how you work with community and even how you create work in site-specific scenarios. So really what you feel would help represent who you are to us. So it can be really open-ended. Open and just to clarify that the support material videos will be separate from your expression of interest. So if you're choosing to record your response for the expression of interest instead of writing it, then that will just be you speaking about your choreographic practice, your movement practice, the communities that you come from and hope to give voice to, etc. But it'll be very clear in the Google form. It's two sections. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chloe's asking, the call mentions a minimum of 20 hours of rehearsal. Is that on site or in a separate space? Great question. Hi, um, 20 hours can be, uh, mostly it's on site. Sometimes we find that if you wanna start in a studio that's a little bit larger space, um, just to know more about who you're working with, what the possibilities are in a less confined space. Sometimes mater movement material is incubated, can be in a larger space. So the 20 hours is total, but it's a minimum. Most people go a little beyond because working with community members, um, the repetition helps. And sometimes it takes time to build. But many dances of, of porch few dances have been made in 20 hours. And may, may I also add that oftentimes, depending on the community that you've invited in um, and how many dancers there are, how many individuals, that during the process, things happen. You, you know, people get a cold or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So also realize that even though we have scheduled rehearsal times, it's very possible that we won't have everyone there all the time. So the amount of hours that we have sort of balances that out a little bit. I was just gonna ask if that's okay. Hi everyone, um, my name is Erica. And just in terms of what you were talking about, Alan, about the, so the the rehearsal hours are preset um, on set days and times. No, okay, that's something that we would be working with um, in conversation with the community members. Okay, that's great. And then the other quick question that I had was, um, when would rehearsals usually start for the August um, presentation? Rehearsals usually start a couple months before because there has to be some leeway because inevitably rehearsals get canceled by the community participant. We ask that the choreographers don't uh, cancel or change um, rehearsals based on whatever schedule you set so that we hold the space for that kind of commitment. 
um, inevitably things happen, as Alan said. And so we like to make enough room. Usually, so usually two months before, you can start even a little bit, a little bit more before that too. Yeah. And, and also creating a schedule allows the homeowner to know when you're going to be on their property, right? So that's, that's also uh, uh, taken into consideration. That's great. Thanks, everybody. Nancy's asking, is this an opportunity open to all forms of dance? I want to myself answer enthusiastically, yes. <laughs> 100% yes. I love this question. Um, I think what I would add to that is the expectation is that choreographers are looking to create movement from the community members that they bring. So not to set a highly stylized um, five, six, seven, eight on a group of non-professional dancers, but to create something, you know, which of course will inevitably be informed by your artistic practice, your dance practice, your movement training and aesthetic, but really, really uh, is in a collaborative uh, creation technique with these community members. I hope that answers your question because it's kind of a yes and, but definitely we're really excited to see people from many dance practices uh, come into PPD. And may, may I just add, it's it's a great question. An example of that was, for example, Nova Bhattacharya was working with this amazing group of dancers and drawing their ideas and inspirations and uh, weaving it into a Bharatanatyam contemporary process. Sri is asking, can I still apply if I do not know anybody in the area? Considering the choreographer having to choose the porch resident partner to dance with. Karen? Um, the choreographer won't be choosing the porch. We will match the choreographers with the porch. So we encourage you to bring people from wherever you want across greater Toronto, wherever your friends, colleagues, family, whoever it is that you're going to embrace to bring into the project can be from anywhere or visiting people for the summer that are coming to see you or want to be part of it. Yeah, extra clearly, the porches in Seton Village are the venue borrowed from residents and choreographers are coming with their community performers into that venue. And Shri also has a quick follow up question. Can I bring my students? We've had a large variety of uh, groups of individuals participating. And one year there was this group of uh, youth, they were between uh, 10 and 13, who all lived on the street, who all went to the local dance school, who were brought together and, and uh, beautiful work was created. So, so we're, we're very, very, very open. And even if you came in and you weren't sure of somebody, we've already had a parent come up and say, hey, there's a whole group of teenagers who'd like to do something, right? So I, I would venture to say, please apply. And whether you have someone or not, it's totally fine. It, and we will assist in whatever ways that we can. I want to add to that, um, it's probably good to clarify if they are students of whatever kind of students, if they're your dance students or, you know, public school students or, yeah. Sid has prompted a great question, which is how many dancers will be in each piece? That is a very good question. Um, I think we have, Ah, I haven't read the application. Maybe Sid or Sophie can do that. Four. There you go. <laughs> there yeah. is a small amount of funding, which didn't happen in the past, just started happening 
Um, we always gave an honorarium to the participants, but now we're going to give a fee to every participant who is over 16, um, a small honorarium to each individual. And we have enough for four per, per home or yeah, per venue, per choreographer. That's great, thank you. I'm gonna allow for a couple more minutes for some final questions, if anybody has anything burning. Priyanka says, to clarify, that's four performers and the choreographer, right? That's correct. So the choreographer will receive a choreographic commission fee and then your four performers over the age of 16 will receive an honorarium for their participation. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We're so excited to read your expressions of interest and get to know you through these coffee dates. Um, I personally really cherish the opportunity to see some of your faces in the Zoom room. If you have any follow up questions, Sarah is available um, to take them and then field them to any four of us if that feels important. And she's also copying the full call for choreographers and the expression of interest Google form right now in the chat. Um, and yeah, this recording will be available on the website until forever. <laughs> no, until, until the call is done. Um, and yeah, we're looking forward to an amazing season this year. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. And making Thanks, everyone, for coming.